Yeah, conference report. Yeah, evolutionary psychology is often a questionable bullshit thing. Hey, by the way, so I just got a divorce um, day before yesterday. My ex uh, introduced me to this band. <laughs> Mapa Pootsi, and uh, that's actually why I was with her so long. Um, and a lot of the beauty came from a good taste in art long after um, we had problems that, that threatened that perspective, let's say. Um, evolutionary psychology often shows up with things like, you know, in, in a conversation where we're about to talk and justify when to fuck someone's brains out. There's, there's obviously a million different sources of this idea of beauty, this category of beauty. I think the fundamental truth here that you have to get before you talk about the beauty um, in some sense, uh, not literally chronologically, but you, know, you have to get your cart before your horse kind of thing. Um, uh, or your horse before your cart rather, but you can buy the cart first, right? But um, you know, it's, 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 the human mind works on gestalt levels. Um, we don't have tiny little pieces we build, you know, the, we don't understand the Legos of the universe and we build our un understanding up, up from that, not in our actual everyday evolutionary interaction with, with the universe. We, uh, we get gestalt, you know, things that are at our scale we get as a gestalt all of the properties of the animal or object of the apple the woman whatever come to us and we get gestalt these feelings like beauty um, wonder all of the different terms you can have for these uh, what however they classify out they definitely have in common that there's a bunch of a bunch of sense perceptions and the feeling is us achieving a gestalt we produce the feeling as response to the sensations and we get a gestalt, uh, an overall feeling of something. And beauty is such a gestalt now. It is ancient because we're talking about an animal that might just look around in a field and it seems beautiful so it lives there and really it's seeing uh, that there's a lot of food and abundance and there's water is beautiful and so there's an evolutionary um, argument there. But often it's, it's funny how we, we try to use this just to justify our own, our own ideas. And really, I mean, beauty has so many things that feed into it. And thinking one thing can make you uh, think something different about beauty. You know, thinking somebody is smart can make you see them as physically more attractive. And if they scan your brain, you're actually triggering the part that is triggered by physical attraction, but it's really this internal brain cross-correlation that whets our appetite for one uh, feeling or another based on expectation, interpretation, and, and just your mindset. So I'm not really fond of uh, evolutionary psychology talking about these issues. Um, it, it feels like there's some sort of subtle um, justification, passive-aggressive justification, when in reality realizing that you're the product of your evolution doesn't do anything to uh, to justify your actions. It's like, but men have been aggressive, so war is justified. No, men have been aggressive. Now we understand more about the problem. It's still a problem. Um, so uh, it's an ironic thing because it, you know it makes me more uh, just more sensitive to people whose evolutionary history has has made them arrive at a contrary view of what's acceptable. Um, so that's my feedback. Oh, cat on the keyboard. Bad cat. It, see, it was the cat. It was not, it was not me. T terrible, terrible cat. Vicious. Vicious. Show them how vicious you are. No, and you're purring. That's not vicious. <laughs>